But here is a story from Variety that did catch my interest. And I'm glad that they brought this up. I'm glad we got this here to go and be talked about. Jeff Mayfield, he puts out a story that says, as, me, as streaming dominates the music world, is radio signal fading? Remember, I do put all these links on the Facebook page and on my Twitter, at King of Podcasts, and you can also find the links on the show description for every episode. So look for this as you go ahead and follow along with me as we talk about this story, because this uh, is kind of hitting in the ground of what I've been talking about for the last six months, maybe even longer. But streaming, we knew that radio was gonna was already having a, a real reckoning right now, and we've I've been talking about that for a while, even through the bankruptcy that iHeartMedia had. Now, enter, excuse me, not Intercom, Alpha Media now is dealing with that, and other companies. You can just see that sports radio is starting to make a little bit of a dive. Some of the other formats that are not working as well. We've talked about CHR Radio taking a big hit. We talked about that last week. So here's what Jeff Mayfield writes in Variety.com. Now, AMFM Radio still owns the largest piece of America's audio pie, according to Edison Research. Their 2020 share of ear report says terrestrial stations account for 39% of audio consumption among those 13 and older, 18% clocked by streaming services, second among all audio segments, including podcasts, satellite radio, and owned music. So, now Edison, you know, I don't know how much that's, I've, I've never really get a chance to hear what the share of air survey, really this annual report they do, how big of the sampling is based on it. I haven't followed back along that, but you know, there's that information that's out there. There's also a music watch report focusing solely on music listening and excluding time spent listening or TSL in the radio business. Listening to news talk, radio podcasts and other non-music fair found that streaming led all sectors in the fourth quarter of 2020 with a 33.2% share. Traditional radio ranked 15.9%. And Mark, this Music Watch research also showed that streaming outperformed radio in each of the last five years. It's a telling tale. And that says everything. But I'm just telling you, you, you got to keep an eye on that. Now, here is the thing that is more telling than anything else. And this story talks about it, and I have another story to bring up just to back this up as well. At the same time, labels have been quietly thinning the ranks of their promotion teams. And a recent relatively high-profile executive shuffle at RCE Records saw a label co-president and longtime promotion influencer Joe Ricciatelli exiting the company. So over the past decade, the chairman and CEO Peter Edge said, there has been a genre shift in consumer demand and streaming has revolutionized every aspect of our business. So we must constantly adapt and iterate on our successes. Boom. This is the crux. This is what needs to be followed. The music industry is now beginning to dissuade the interest in radio promotion. They're starting to make cuts because they have to make cuts. And where are they going to make cuts? radio and here's the other thing too because of what's going on right now this kind of promotion you got to ask yourself the question is it there going to be a point where billboard which of course does the chart compilations here for the industry will they do the same thing will they start reconsidering the scoring of radio airplay in their charts because we're obviously seeing that the business of the industry is starting to make their own switch over. Again, adapt and iterate on successes. Go where the success is, it's streaming. That's where the promotion is going best. That's where, you know, I'm just imagining they're, you know, again, radio is not getting, it's really not causing so many sales or really affecting so many downloads, I would imagine. It's really coming from streaming. Because digital, you could download it or you could stream it. And the downloads will count as sales. We're not getting as many physical sales as before, where radio was important. So while most executives are reluctant to speak on the record about a shift to radio promotion, one senior executive at Major Label said this. This is important. And radio needs to step up and get their ears peeled as to what this radio executive is saying. Radio 
has morphed and changed to the point where you ask where is consumption happening it's happening at the streaming partners you think about where that listener is where they're leaning in and you say to yourself where do i put the resources radio still has value for sure that's just a nice little say of yeah radio has some relevancy and it's been like that for the last five years but it's at the tail end of the consumption curve not at the beginning I'm going to read that again because that says everything about radio right now. And my radio brethren out here, the radio executives, if any of you are listening to this program, God forbid you do. I am saying this to you to please make changes now. You need to go ahead and overcome your corporate ho cohorts and you need to realize that your jobs are next. Your jobs will be susceptible. At some point, the iHeartMedia stuff, you know, like Bob Pittman talking about bringing up AI, buying an AI technology company to create, with robotics, create voiceovers that can be done without actual real human talent. Replacing humans with robots, basically. Robotic voices, the next step. So you got to ask yourself, again, radio has morphed and changed to the point where you ask, where is consumption happening? It's happening at the streaming partners. You think about where that listener is. It's where they're leaning in. And you say to yourself, where do I put the resources? It's at the tail radio as at the tail end of the consumption curve, not at the beginning. It says everything. And as I said, and Mr. Mayfield adequately, you know, correctly says is that the pandemic has exacerbated the change. Before, quote, we were like, wow, if we could hit 30 million a radio audience, that would be outstanding, says one sales and marketing executive. During COVID, some of these superstar releases at top 40 or wherever else might hit 15 to 18 million an audience, and you're still getting high fives. It just takes so much longer. And radio could go ahead and get ahead and get the airplay up and be a part of the promotion, not the tail end of the consumption curve. They relish as the secondary source. And you know what part of it is why? Is because the payola is not there. They're not getting anything from it. They're not making money off the music. I got that. But you're also making no money from the advertising. So if you can't make money off of ads, why aren't you working with the music labels? Why aren't you working with them? Why don't you go ahead and take their money? Find something to work with them so they can do something. Why isn't some kind of collaboration going on here? The business of making records popular. Why isn't radio working alongside the music labels as they once did? During the many decades when physical sales drove the music business, radio promotion was crucial and accounted for a huge percentage of major label budgets. The rise of social media and satellite radio led some label CFOs to scrutinize promotional spending even before the shift to streaming began. And that's also because of the corporatization of radio. Because we remember, decades ago, about 1995, 1996, the consolidations had already begun. The deregulation because of the Telecommunications Act of 1986 would have already started. So even at this point, 2000s, satellite radio comes into play. And here we are. And the change from the music labels had already started two decades ago. Now, senior executives in two of the three majors say the chairs of their parent companies are urging their labels to reduce even more. They're saying they need to go and cut major radio promotion altogether or to, to the bone. Radio, this is a warning shot. This is a red flag. This is where you need to do something here. You're going to lose that. You're going to lose it. You're, what are you doing about it? Because the music directors... The program directors, they don't get to go and talk directly to the record labels as I used to do when I was back in the day. When I talked to a &R reps, promotion people, I got to talk to them for radio or for mixtapes or whatever it was. I could go and talk to them, and I got their records played. However small my station was, and I charted and I reported to the journals, to the trade journals, and I did that. And now that's going to be lost Radio networks have been trimming costs as well. Between Intercom and iHeart, thousands of people over the last 18 months who are no longer having jobs. Town Square Media and Beasley Broadcasting 
are among the radio broadcasters that also significantly reduced their ranks, other than among the top 10 radio companies, radio-owned companies. Where there might have been 60 or 80 programs around the country making these decisions, it's now down between 20 and 30. One longtime promotional executive says, quote, I think it's going to shrink even more, even as a couple of the other chains consolidate. Instead of doing it on a local level, they'll do it on a national level. Which is what I said. If radio wants to continue to do what they got to do and they can't afford to go and run stations locally, then run them as national stations. It's time to do it now. If you're going to do it, you know, you, you obviously are failing at trying to create a local product. You don't have the body. You don't have the resources because you failed the local markets. So all you can do now is offer local advertising and some local information with the national programming. That's all you can do at this point. No longer syndicate. It's just a national format. If that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do, okay? I mean, you remember people, you know, there are some people that are customizing themselves, you know, listening to music, you know, on Spotify or Apple or Pandora. But then again, there are certain charts that everybody's listening to and they don't mind consuming it. So Apple has their own pop chart. You know, Spotify has today's top hits. Pandora has their list. I mean, and, and the Billboard Hot 100 is on Spotify, which is why I have that service. Things like that. So consequently, while the senior ranks of promotion departments remain amply staffed, there's less need for local and regional reps in a business where more and more programming decisions happen higher up the radio food chain. And one promotion veteran estimates the labels employ 20% fewer promotion heads than five years ago, 40% less than 10 years ago. And here's another industry observer that also makes a point. He says, quote, I've seen an exodus of promotion people over the past few years as labels concentrate more on streaming. And after iHeart and other consolidations, there are indeed fewer decision makers to talk to, plus fewer slots to work. Spotify's Today's Top Hits turns over 40 songs relatively quickly. Top 40 radio plays current 18 currents at a time and holds the weekend's blind lights and power rotation for a year. Again, so there's only 18 slots basically in radio where you have a song that's going to be played every other hour or almost every hour, about every 90 minutes. And that's it. 18 currents. You're talking about a song that might get played, what, about 120 times, 115 times a week at number one or, or your top five songs. And then your other songs underneath the top 20 or so, the top, the other 15 songs from five to 20 in that particular market will get played at least 60 to 100 times. And that's what they're getting. So, the exposure is limited now, and it's just not as it was before. And again, it's the tail end of the consumption curve. Very well said that executive said that. Now, the industry shifted away from sales began in earnest when Spotify launched in the U.S. in 2011. That transition could have enhanced the status of promotion departments. Instead, labels debated whether streaming services should fall under the purview of promotion or sales teams, with most opting for the latter. Even though the processing of uh, persuading a playlist editor to add a song might be similar to recording a airplay from radio, which it is. Promotion should now go towards streaming, not sales. Warner Music Nashville is one exception. They have separate teams of radio and streaming specialists in the same department. Sony Music has streaming services centralized to the sales and global digital business team. They go more into the details of this. But now, with the exception of top-level artists, radio is rarely, very rarely the place to start any fire, especially with new acts, which is why I've been thumping for the last month about Olivia Rodrigo and the song Driver's License. New act. Exactly the point. So with our superstar acts who are vying for a number one, top five, or top ten debut, our radio promotion team is hand-in-hand hand with us. But the developing artist side is very much streaming first to see what we can build pools of listeners and spread it to some scale where radio picks up on it. This shouldn't be that way. Radio should be, it should be simultaneous. There is no excuse for this anymore. Radio doesn't have the option to do that anymore. If they want to be able to be a player in the market, they need to be along for the ride. They do not take the secondary market. They're not secondhand, okay? So you'd rather not be, you know, the major store. You'd rather not be the Amazon. You'd rather be the secondhand thrift store. You'd rather be the Goodwill. I don't know. I don't know what that whole idea was. 
So instead, radio has become a way to extend the life of a project, which is what they've been doing. Every major artist that comes out, Selena Gomez, Dua Lipa, the biggest week for streaming is the first week, slow decay from there, and even though it's a hit or miss, you help that radio helps extend the life of the streaming, which only works for some artists. So here's what they brought up a little bit later on about driver's license. So here we go. Driver's license bowed at number one on Billboard's Hot 100, which of course determines songs popularity based on the combination of sales, radio, airplane, and digital streams, drew 8.1 million audience radio audience impressions. Not bad for a song that's new to the market, but that's a drop in the bucket to the 76.1 million streams the song clocked in that same week. 8.1 million radio audience impressions. That was means the major markets I told about that that same week that the song came out was it January 8th or January 7th? And then later that week, Z100, KISS FM, other stations started to add the song to their playlist. And audience impressions, which means that's just the audience in the market that might be listening to the song. The couple of times it might have been played. Sean Ross, Vice President of Music and Programming for Edison Research, cites Rodrigo's song as proof that labels still value terrestrial radio. In 2010, Forget You by CeeLo became instantly phenomenal, and Atlantic spent the better part of a year working at the radio. In 2013, size Gangnam Style broke without radio, and the label still cared enough to take it to radio. So, Interstep, so Interscope still saw radio as the next level for a song as phenomenal as Driver's License. And despite shifts in the business, radio does remain an important way for many people to discover new music. In the 2020 Infinite Dial report of Edison Research, 46% of consumers 12 and up who consider finding new music important, said that radio is one of the channels where they discover fresh tunes, although it's not the most important one. YouTube is normally the most frequently cited source for music discovery at 68%. Friends and Family, 47%. Spotify, it's 42%. Radio, again, the relevancy, it continues to dwindle all the time. To close out the story here, they say that radio isn't going away anytime soon. I would beg to differ about that. But again, there's changes in radio that are going on. We'll talk about that in a moment. But there's that little question that streaming has gone a long way towards leveling the playing field. Things are a lot different these days. Being on a major label or played on the radio aren't the only ways to succeed. And there you go. And they're not even talking about where TikTok comes into play and helps to boost records. They're not even talking about how driver's license got a boost from TikTok to help get it to where it is. Though they did mention YouTube. There you go. That is a major change. The record labels are starting to look at and say, we can find a place to cut right now. And again, with the pandemic, we don't have live music coming in, merchandise, a lot of different ways to promote. We don't get, and also the promotion, we don't have to give to the radio stations anymore to give it away. The swag, we're not even doing that. We can go to the streamers now. We can go to something else. We can go to social media and do it ourselves because radio was just a middleman and radio is no longer being the proper middleman anymore. Now they're no longer the conduit. They can just, radio can just, they're not even necessary. They're just like, oh, this is just this bigger, this big entity of, of all these stations and all these resources. You know, we don't have to do anything. We just throw them, you know, if we need them, we'll reach out to them. Don't call us, we'll call you. That's basically what they're doing. Variety and Jeff Mayfield, excellent story. This is important for all of you out there to realize that radio is undergoing changes, and this, more than anything else, says everything. 